Hello everyone, this is Mary Ann and I am so happy that I will finally be able to make this video for you guys. This is going to be a video showing the full grain leather backpack that I have designed for myself and which was manufactured for me by Tannery Manila here in the Philippines. And I am going to show you uh, the backpack and I am going to explain to you the features and why I have designed my backpack this way and I'm also going to mention uh, the process in which I have designed the backpack and the process that I went through uh, with tannery in the manufacture of this beautiful beautiful backpack so if you want to know more about those details of the backpack and if you want really really uh, an in-depth video showing close-up of the parts of the backpack just stick around so that is the front view of the backpack I'm actually home that is my bed and I am in my parents house and this is my room and when I'm not here it's my son who stays in this room not in his own room and um, I have you know opened the curtains but the color of this backpack, as you can see in this video, it comes out as a medium brown. It's called tan by tannery, but right now it's medium brown. But the color changes depending on what you're holding it under. Like, let me show you how the color looks when it's under direct sunlight. Or not really direct sunlight, but closer to the source of the sunlight. So I am right at the window and this is how the color of the leather looks when it is um, right near a window and it's daylight it's actually 10 o'clock in the morning so the sunlight is off to well not exactly right above me but it's approaching the uh, most overhead position because we are two hours before noon but this becomes a little bit redder when it's under the sunlight and here i am i'm holding a lamp with a white bulb over oh sorry for the wire over the backpack and it is yellowish it is more yellowish under this kind of light and in overhead it, it, i have turned the overhead light on here let me show you oops there uh, it's yeah more brown I would say there so that is the color of the leather and how it changes depending on the different kind of lights that you hold it under let me show you the leather here this is the leather that is used in the entire bag this is the tan cationic leather um, this tag comes in all it comes with all tannery bags so you can see here the logo of tannery it says the tannery manila and the leather i measured this is three millimeters thick and this is the underside of the leather this backpack when empty uh is not very heavy but it's not very light either uh, I would say that I tried, you know, weighing this on a weighing scale, but it was too light to measure a non-human on it. But when I stepped on the weighing scale and weighed myself without this bag, and then I stepped on it again carrying this bag empty, um, I would say that this bag has added about 2.5 pounds or less it, it was not exact it was a digital scale it was like a uh, more or less between two pounds and two and a half which is understandable because leather can get heavy and with this amount of leather um it can get heavy but saddleback leather uh the medium simple backpack comes to you already weighing 4.5 pounds it lists them that fact on their website which was confirmed by all of the people who bought the backpack and made videos about it they said well it's really heavy yeah I understand that because it's real leather and real leather is not light especially if you have this much leather in a backpack 
so that is the backpack and the leather and the color of the leather uh, and I am now going into some closer view so that I can discuss with you the features of the backpack. As you can see, the backpack can totally stand on its own, even on a foam surface. This is, but this is a firm foam. It's not a spring mattress. It's a, it's a foam, and it's quite firm, but it doesn't flop over onto its face because that's really the problem with some backpacks. I've had two different backpacks of different dimensions from two different brands uh, using two different kind of structures and materials, but they always fall, you know, flat because, well, they are made of some kind of fabric, so they don't have much rigidity at the bottom. But because of the material of this bag and because of the way it's designed and the way I it's engineered even when it's empty it doesn't fall over f flat on its face like that because the the one advantage that i like about having backpacks is that you can actually use it as a mobile workstation because you can stand it right beside you on a chair when you're at work and you can just access everything that you need and then put them back after you're done this can really work when i am uh, when i am doing something in a place that is not really mine like when i am in a coffee shop or in a camp or not in when i'm not indoors when i'm outside and i don't really have a big enough workspace to use that is one of the advantages of having a backpack where you have easy access to everything but the disadvantage of that is because if the the way the pack back is engineered is you have top heavy items at the top it can fall over flop on its face but for now the backpack is completely empty so uh you can see how well it's been made because the weight distribution is very even this is a floppy backpack and when I first approached Tannery for this and they asked me what kind of leather I wanted, I looked into their website and saw all those beautiful, beautiful leathers that they have for their briefcases. And I actually wanted one of them, the Vison. It's a greenish brown that is, uh, well, I will just put the link down below because it's too beautiful for words. But when Tannery analyzed that uh, leather, in terms of the, what I want the backpack to do for me, they advised me to pick another leather that is softer because that leather is too rigid. That, that's the way the, the leather has been tanned and that's the kind of leather that it is. So it fulfills a particular purpose. But for the purposes of the backpack and after they have analyzed my design, they said that a softer leather but a very thick one will be better because when you have a backpack you sort of uh, toss things on there that are not you know that don't have a definite shape inside sometimes you're tossing jackets there and sometimes uh, you put smaller bags inside a backpack and you don't usually do that in a briefcase you just put pay that the purpose of a briefcase is to have stacks of papers you know, all in one direction, all in the same direction. It, with a backpack, uh, the purpose is different. So you need softer leather, but very thick leather that can hold the weight and the battering that we often do to our backpacks because we tend to batter our backpacks, not our handbags and not our briefcases. So that made a lot of sense to me. So I chose this leather. It's called a tan cationic leather. This is a special leather that has been developed by the chemist of Tannery. Uh, tannery has a, Tannery Manila has a tannery in Bulacan and they have their own chemist and they tan their own leathers and it's it's very, very, sorry, I'm trying to get into a more comfortable sitting position here. It is a very, very soft leather and it, uh, it you can see how it stretches there those are my fingertips over there and there is a soft grain to it it has a pebbled finish and of course because this is full grain leather 
uh, it's not all uniform. Let me show you the back. The back has some... If this were on a human being, I would say they look like stretch marks. But I'm not really sure if cows get stretch marks. But that's what they look like. And the grain is different here. The, the pebbling is different here. And it's different here. And this one is different from this one. It's all the same leather, but with when you know with real leather, it, you you don't get a perfectly uniform finish. So if you're buying a bag and leather leather is perfectly uniform, it's probably not real leather. So I really like that. This is the tan cationic leather that Tannery developed. It's proprietary to them. Only they have this kind of leather in this exact same color and exact same finish so that's the leather that I used and for the lining I also chose this fabric this is from tannery they showed me what available uh, materials and fabrics they have for the liner that can be used inside the bag and I use this I wanted a light colored lining inside the bag because um, I always, you know, I always tend to like big bags and deep bags and when the lining is dark, it makes it harder for me to see what's actually inside the bag because I tend to usually just throw things in there and then when I need them, I panic because I can't see them in the dark and for a while I've had bags in which I had to attach a small flashlight into them so that I can you know see where my stuff is inside the very dark bag so I really preferred a light lining so even if I don't have a flashlight the light color or the light shade of the lining will reflect whatever light is outside of the bag and will you know tend to bring that into the bag so see even with this shot you can still see even it to the bottom of the bag and the piping of the lining is this one I actually initially asked tannery if they can use this same leather for the piping of the bag but they said this leather would be too 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 thick so I was okay with that because it matches the inner lining anyway it's some kind of a tweed not really not as thick as tweed but it looks tweed like it has a herringbone herringbone no I'm not sure if this is herringbone but this looks like a, a lot like chevron pattern and that is the weave the the pattern that you see is the weave it's not printed on there that is how the fabric has been woven let me bring you in for an even closer look there that is the weave and now we go to the hardware of this bag uh, the pockets are they, they all have zipper closures and this is a YKK zipper you can see the the YKK brand on the side of this I'm not sure if you can see it but there's a YKK in there YKK is the expert at zippers since well from as far back as I can remember I don't know from the 60s although I was born in the 60s but when I was growing up, every every high quality item had a YKK zipper. This has a brass fitting to it and the zipper pool is the exact same leather as the bag. So I actually looked, I was looking at saddleback leather and they all close with buckles. And I was thinking maybe that can work for me because it would be more difficult for thieves to get into my bag because I have to unbuckle the buckle but for me that would be more difficult when I am actually you know working and I will mention a thief deterrent um, feature of this backpack later so that is the zipper it matches the brown it doesn't really come off as completely matching in this video but in person it matches the leather and now we go to the snaps the pockets are enclosed with a zipper but they also have a slip uh, pocket in front of it that is lined and the pockets are also lined but uh, the the part where the leather the part here where there is leather 
is not lined but the part where you can normally see the underside of the leather it is uh, lined with the same lining used in the body of the bag and over here all pockets have slip pockets and they're secured by a strap that closes with a snap and the snaps are it's also brass the same as the fitting on the zipper and it is brass and it's just an ordinary good quality snap that really snaps with a satisfying sound and those are the snaps and for the d-rings i we have used um brass d-rings these are um less than an inch i would say these are seven uh seven eighths of an inch not exactly one inch and this is the same d-rings that are used for the compression straps and the d-ring here and the d-ring here and the d-ring on the inside of the bag and i will discuss later why i have a lot of d-rings the d-rings are of very good quality these are brass but this actually have a, a, a coating to it that I'm, I'm sure that with time this coating can get you know uh, th these can flake off i'm not really sure but with, if it's very good quality it won't flake off but if it flakes off um that's okay because i actually like brass that tarnishes this is not coated so i'm thinking that it's gonna tarnish really really good when i've been using the bag for i don't know several several years and this is actually a luggage tag that i have made this is not part of the bag but this tag is part of the bag but this is not part of the bag i requested for this extra i paid extra for this this i requested this to have the same leather as the bag and i just have my card on here and this has a little little buckle that is also non-coated brass this kind of brass matches the snaps much better than the d-rings but they use a lot of d-rings in the briefcases that they make and those look more polished than the backpacks because backpacks are supposed to have a certain more rugged aesthetic so i guess this is why the d-rings have polishes and the snaps and buckles don't i'm not i'm not sure i'm trying to just uh you know find reason for <laughs> why the d-rings are like that and over here we have the pocket the side pocket and also the snap and here we have rivets yes uh there are also d-rings here and you know i have a lot of d-rings on the bag because i'm going to be using this for everything for school for work for travel for you know moving around a portable office if i need to although i'm not yet using that but i have a lot of d-rings and the d-rings on the straps these actually when you're wearing the backpack these d-rings go right by your you know by your chest area and this is where i can hang uh, an id badge so that i don't have to hang it over my neck and when like when i'm in a convention that spans several days i don't have to keep hanging and unhanging the id badge over my neck i just i can just strap it onto here and then forget about it completely and then whenever i have to go to the convention i put on the backpack and the id is already there this is also handy for attaching you know a, a, a phone so that you can have easy access to it because it's right at the level level of your chest that you can easily see what's on the screen of the phone and it also can handle maybe a gopro on a short leash so that you can always have it handy or you can have one of those pull out leashes for uh, your gopro and then when you're not using it you can hang over it and if you're using it you can just pull it out and then you're using your gopro but of course you cannot cannot uh, display your small cameras and your cell phones out in public when you are in metro manila because you are just inviting robbers and thieves but when you're in a you know european country 
or uh, in, a, in a safe uh, area, you can totally do that. And I have also four D rings at the bottom. I'm going to be placing leather straps on this. I might be asking Tannery to manufacture straps for me because this is where I can put a wet raincoat or a wet umbrella that I cannot put inside or a bulky jacket that no longer fits uh, inside the body of the bag. And this is where you can also strap a tripod for a camera. A lot of heavy duty camera bags have D-rings at the bottom because that's which, where you put your tripod. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure I can use these D-rings for for uh, another purpose like when it's you know when everything is wet I can strap on some plasticky thing here so that it can protect the bottom of the bag when I have to put it on something wet and I have no other choice but you know this is leather and if it gets wet you know that's okay I'm ready to strap a wet raincoat into here anyway so I'm not sure I just thought that it would be very very handy to you someday um, but for now even if there's nothing attached to it it looks good it it matches the aesthetic of the bag and here we have the uh, buckles for the strap they are they are uh, they are adjustable and these are also made of brass which i love because they match the backpack so well Okay, now let's go to the inside of the backpack and it is get it, it's a little bit difficult there you can see that there are three evenly spaced D rings in one corner of this backpack and there are actually three evenly spaced D rings on each corner of this backpack for a total of 12 D rings and this is for the bungee system that will be used inside the backpack. Now, you have seen backpacks with crisscrossing elastics on an external pocket or outside of the backpack without a pocket. Sometimes you see the crisscrossing uh, elastic cords that you can use to quickly stash small things, light things in there for easy access without the need of a pocket. Uh, I have never yet seen a bungee system. Oh, this leather looks really good. I have never yet seen a bungee system that is used inside a bag. And I wanted to try it out for this bag because I do not bring my laptop all the time. But when I do need to bring a laptop and if this has a permanent padded pocket for the laptop, what if I do not use my laptop and I do not need a padded pocket for it, then the padding and the pocket will just use space. Not too much space actually, but enough space to matter because um, if, if padded stuff can actually, you know, Sometimes they just get in the way if you don't need them. So I decided to try out the bungee system here. I can put my laptop here and attach the bungee cords to secure the back the, the laptop uh, in its place so that it does not flop around. And because the the the, the D rings for the bungee cords are in all of the corners, I can use this bungee cord this D ring to secure one bungee cord for this panel here for the laptop and i can use this same cord to attach another i mean i can use this same d-ring to attach another cord that goes over to that side or maybe over here starting from this from the second one because this one opens so obviously you cannot attach here but i can sorry I can attach a bungee cord here that, to actually secure a tall, thin thing, like maybe a, a tall tumbler or a folding umbrella that is dry or maybe, a, I don't know, anything that is tall and thin. And I can also use these D-rings here to secure something else so I won't need to separate compartments i just need the whole body of the bag 
and I can just reconfigure the bungee cords to contain whatever is in the bag because if I don't bring my laptop and I have a lot of papers I can secure them to here so they don't flop around and that is the reason why I have 12 D rings inside the main body of the bag and that is also why I did not design the body of this bag to have internal compartments because you know this is a new system that I am trying to see it works it can be a new thing you know it's it can be a new thing that we do yeah so those are the details of the bag and now I'm going to talk to you why a backpack and why that kind of backpack now I have been thinking that I was never a backpack person uh, I have been living in Manila I've been studying and working in Manila for about 14 years now and I never really seriously considered myself a backpack person because I hardly ever used a backpack and then I realized that for about 12 of those 14 years I had a car and I drove myself and I used that car every day whenever I had to go anywhere so I did not need to have a bag attached to me and I didn't really need to have my hands free all the time well I did need to have my hands free because I'm driving and I need both hands but I did not need to have a bag attached to me at all times and still have my hands free so ever since I started well, when I first went to Metro Manila I did not have a car yet I used public transport and I had a backpack and I swore by it and then when I got a car, I gravitated to totes because they are much easier uh, to look into, you know, no pockets at all, just one giant cave and you put everything in there. And when I'm in the car uh, and I need something while I'm in the car, I just look into it, not have to open any pockets and there would be the thing that I need. But uh, ever since I decided not to drive myself anymore because traffic in Manila is really really hell and I got sick because of it I will put the link to the blog post about it down below but ever since that time I have decided not to drive myself and I use public transport all the time so aside from that I also needed to carry stuff for school the light keeps changing so I needed a backpack and I have used my old North Face backpack then but it was too big and uh, it was too floppy and it was waterproof but mm, it really didn't do anything for me. It fulfilled its purpose but there was no magic. You know like when we use a certain thing that works it's okay but when a certain thing when a certain thing works and it has magic you would opt for that second thing that works and has magic instead of for that other thing that works but doesn't have magic i'm not sure if i'm making sense actually but um kindred spirits would understand <laughs> so then i decided seriously that i'm going to be having that lifestyle for at least two more years anyway because my i'm still going to be studying for my MA for my master's degree for the next two years and therefore I cannot resign from work until the next two years and then now I am considering to proceed with a PhD after I get my MA so I'm not really sure if I can resign from work or maybe I should just transfer to freelance again you know things of that nature and that means I'm going to be carrying a lot of stuff anyway. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to be driving back in Manila if traffic becomes better. But I am not backing on that. So I am banking on having to carry a backpack um, more. So I decided to have this uh, instead. So that is why a backpack and now the pockets i have designed the pockets this way because when i designed the backpack i really analyzed everything that i needed to carry on a day daily basis for purposes of work and school i measured everything i analyzed my the little baggies that i carry i have a 
a small bag for using the restroom I have a small bag for pencils I have a small bag for small papers I have a small bag for you know other essentials like hand sanitizers and measuring tape and a dummy phone and and then an extra bag for for cables and plugs and mobile power bags pan, power power banks um, so many things that I there were many things that I needed to uh, consider in designing the pocket configuration of this bag and I did uh, measure everything and I did decide on really the non-negotiables so I I set aside the non-negotiables measured them decided on how they are going to be distributed across the bag according to their purpose and I also factored in the occasional things that I need to carry um, so it's kind of complicated and I don't want to ramble on in this video about it but if if you're the kind of person who needs to bring a lot of different things every day then you would understand what I mean there are things that you need for personal care there are needs there are things that you need for connectivity there are things that you need for supplies so um, and there are things that you need just in case and there are things that you need all the time with you for purposes of you know having a sense of security uh, uh, like you know <laughs> amulets or prayer books or <laughs> well that is very very um, dark country right there but those are the things that I considered in designing the pocket configuration of this bag so that's why the pockets are here like for instance this is configured exactly for my planner uh, a planner goes on here and it it fits exactly that planner and only that planner and then a small pencil case that I use for that planner is in the same pocket and in this pocket right here I have essentials essentials for uh, face and hands and for sanitizing stuff and these are you know quick access this is a quick access pocket for you know eyeglass wipes and measuring tapes and calculators and um, you know things like that and over here I have a large tissue I will put here a large tissue and you know maybe lip balm yeah. I'm going to pack this bag and I am going to bring you with me and over here is a it's a thin pocket for uh, gadget stuff cables and here is another pocket for uh, straws <laughs> disposable straws and disposable tr straws for drinking and a secondary pencil case and I believe I have already discussed what goes in here when I discussed the D-rings so really that's it that's a short explanation or not so short explanation of why the pocket configuration is like this and for purposes of symmetry and design after I measured after I have decided on the dimension of this pocket I matched it to the height of this pocket so everything is aligned I'm kind of a stickler for alignment and proportion and all the straps are about an inch wide everything is an inch wide including the compression straps and they have the same you know curvature at the end so everything matches there and that's it for the pocket configuration now this is a really beautiful beautiful bag and I have been using it for like three days and I have traveled with it I'm on travel right now and it really really fulfills the purpose and it smells amazing I cannot stop smelling it it's really really rich leather smell that cannot come from a fake leather and I do love the leather I love that they're not exactly the same I love that it's very very soft but very thick not as thick as the five millimeter super thick uh, saddleback leathers but um, thick on its own and I really really like it and when I first posted photos of this bag on Facebook I've had a lot of 
uh, my friends and friends of friends commenting that they want this backpack also from Tannery and they even emailed Tannery because I provided the website and the email address of Tannery Manila on that post. Um, they've had a lot of emails also and because um, this is my own design, Tannery said that uh, they've had a lot of emails uh, expressing interest in this bag and they cannot really manufacture this bag without my permission because they said that it is my design so they need my permission and i do know that uh, under philippine laws and under international laws whoever created anything owns the the rights to its design if you did it on your own i mean if you have not been employed or commissioned by anyone to design or create anything if you did it on your own in your free time for your own personal purposes and then you own rights to the design of that thing that you have designed now I know that but it has always been my habit to copyright everything like crazy because I am a writer I have been writing for well 20 years and everything is copyrighted even my blog is copyrighted every year I take the new contents every December I take all the new content that I have uploaded uh, as blog posts for the year and then have it copyrighted so the design for this bag is copyrighted I don't have the official papers for it yet because the official papers need a copyright number and they're still generating that and it takes the government a while to do that but I will get that on June 5 now if you want tannery to make this exact same bag for you I can give them the documentation that they need in order to legally allow them to use my design if you want this bag but let me tell you this bag is very big it is 17 inches tall the height is standard um, and I made the height standard because if I needed to buy a raincoat for the bag I want to be able to buy something off the rack and it will fit the height but 17 is the second largest backpack that you can find that is not yet a camping backpack um, or not yet a, a hiking backpack there is a taller backpack that is 19 inches in height but for regular use people get by with 15 inches in height which is about here but this is very big and I actually uh, considered designing a backpack that is only 15 inches in height but when I started using backpacks um, I noticed that I tend to use it more therefore I put more things in it and in my experience the extra height because if you put books in there they usually comes only up to here so I said do I really need that extra height but in recent as events have unfolded and my life got even crazier I realized that I needed that extra height for something and in my case <laughs> There were even instances in which I needed to place an entire loaf of bread in there. So I needed the extra height. You can put a rolled up jacket in there, a dry jacket in there, a dry raincoat, which if, if, if you don't want to strap it on here, but you can also put a loaf of bread on there. Um, and you cannot do that with a tote. Well, you can try, but it's going to squash the loaf of bread. Well just another evidence of how crazy my life has gotten if I have to put an entire loaf of bread on my backpack and that is why I have a 70 incher if you do need to put loaves of bread in your backpack get the 17 incher so but most people can get by with 15 so there that is the much awaited video of this backpack that people have been waiting for i was so <laughs> excited to do this video and i actually had to wait until morning uh so that i can get you know different kinds of light on here to show you how the leather changes and this is a really fun video to do so thank you so much for watching until next time bye